Rev up your engines! Today we're going to try to figure out why this Nissan is overheating. And like any car, you got to start somewhere. There's a dozen different reasons a car can overheat. You got to pinpoint it. And the first thing is the most logical. You pressure test the system. And I got this new toy, I can't wait to try it out. Now to pressure test the system, you take the radiator cap off. But unfortunately, there are a bunch of different size radiator caps on cars nowadays. And rather than buy every single adapter, and there are dozens of them, this Pittsburgh kit that I just got is cool. Because it's got a main adapter, and then different size plungers that go in to seal the radiator so when you pump it up, you see if there's a leak in the system. In this case, it's a small one that fits in. So, we put that inside here. It just spins in. Then the whole assembly goes over the top. And the little notches hold the side here. And then you just spin the top here until it gets tight. Then you get the pump and attach it here. And we pumped it up to about 15 pounds. We'll let it sit and see if it loses pressure. Patience is indeed a virtue. You wait about 10 minutes. See what happens to the pressure. And in this case, it really hasn't lost any pressure, so we know the system is not leaking, that it's intact. And just in case there's a really small leak, we'll look under to see if it's dripping anywhere from all that pressure, but no, it's not dripping anywhere. So it's not leaking. Remember, always start with the most obvious things. The pressure tester is indispensable for finding overheating problems. Start simple. So we'll put the cap back on and do another test. We'll start up the car. <laughs> And let it warm up a little. We'll check the gauge. When it starts to get warm, it should build some pressure up. We'll wait a few minutes until the gauge gets closer to the middle. And while we're waiting, we'll turn on the AC to see if the cooling fan works. Turn on the fan and put the AC on. Well, you can hear the cooling fans are blowing like mad, so they're working. So now that the temperature gauge is in the middle, it's warmed up. This should release some pressure when we release it. As you can see, it hasn't released any pressure. Which means that the radiator cap is bad. It's not sealing it. So we're sticking on a new radiator cap and taking it for a ride. Because nothing beats road testing a car when it's overheating. You have to. To do highway driving, city driving. Do all the different parameters to see if it's going to overheat again or whether it's fixed. And voila, after half an hour of driving, no more overheating! So now it's fixed. Well, how does that work? Your radiator system is a pressurized system. Most of them are about 15 PSI now. When I was a young mechanic, it was a lot less because the radiators were bigger. But guess what? Bigger radiators cost more money to build. So for ages, they'd made smaller radiators and they upped the pressure. So if you have more pressure in a smaller radiator, it can do the same cooling as a bigger radiator that has less pressure in it. But of course, with modern cars, if you do lose pressure on the radiator cap and it's not holding the correct pressure, the car will overheat faster because it won't have enough pressure to keep the temperature from getting too high, and then steam will start escaping from where it's not holding pressure, and it will lose coolant through steam, and eventually it'll just bubble all the coolant out when it starts to boil. So you wanna make sure your radiator system is holding pressure. The pressure tester, that shows if the system itself on the vehicle is holding pressure, and the cap itself, that's the ultimate sealer on top of it. If it's bad, you lose pressure and it'll overheat. So nowadays, it's probably not a bad idea every three or four years. Just buy another radiator cap and stick it on your radiator when the engine's cold so you can prevent anything from happening because they are spring-loaded. The springs wear out. The rubber gets corroded. They do eventually wear out. And they don't cost that much money. And you might also want to take my advice. This is an aftermarket cap that was on this old Nissan. I put a factory cap on. The factory ones are generally much better made. Sometimes the aftermarket ones, hey, I've had them not work right out of the box. So now you know how to diagnose and repair your car when it starts to overheat. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.